All right, it's a minute after the hour. We've got quite a few people in attendance. I still see some more folks uh, starting to join us, but we're gonna get started anyway. Welcome to Oxford Computer Group's latest webinar, Transitioning from Mint to the Cloud. A quick comment before we get started. We had quite a response to this particular one. And I wanted to also thank all of you that submitted questions in advance. That was very helpful for us. And we've captured a number of uh, the common questions and we'll be getting to those at the end. But uh, let's do a little bit of introduction, introductions here first. And first, who's OCG? Well, we've been doing the identity uh, platform with Microsoft for about 19 years. We've got hundreds, if not thousands, of enterprise projects that have been delivered around the world. I think uh, that's in evidence by this webinar because we have attendees from Europe, from Asia, South America, you name it, we've got attendees. We've been the Microsoft Identity Partner of the Year eight times. We were a finalist for Microsoft Security System Integrator of the Year recently. And we continue to work very, very closely with Microsoft on their platform, their identity platform in the direction that they're taking that platform. Part of it is evidenced by this presentation. The services we offer, planning and assessment, deployment service, and managed services. Before we go any further, uh, I'm going to open up a poll and get a bit of a background on everyone that'll help us fine tune this presentation. So launching the poll now, pretty straightforward one. Does your organization have an Azure AD uh, license? Yes, no, or unknown. Give you a little bit more time to collect the responses. Wow, it's pretty overwhelmingly that everyone does have an Azure AD premium license. But I'll give it a little bit more time and let's close this out. And let's take a second poll here. Since this presentation is primarily about MIM, we'd like to see what features you're using with MIM. And again, this will help us fine tune our presentation today. And let me go ahead and launch that. It looks like we even have some Behold users. That's great. So a little bit more time on this poll and then we will close it out and move on to the rest of the presentation. All right, thanks for your responses. And if I can get my slide to advance, we'll continue on. So we will be answering questions that were submitted in advance first, but uh, very much we'd like your live questions as well. So you can put those in the chat window. Uh, our entire panel is gonna be watching the chat window. And if we get some really great uh, questions, we will interrupt the presentation uh, to answer those. But typically we're going to answer most of those questions as best we can towards the end. And there will be a link to this presentation uh, sent by email. Okay, so on to our agenda. We're going to be talking about the MIM support timeline, what MIM is currently used for. Uh, this is going to be a key area of this presentation what MIM features can be migrated to Azure AD and Microsoft's identity roadmap as we know it. We, we do spend a lot of time talking to their engineering team. Uh, and uh, putting our own thought and effort into how do we respond to uh, these changes that we see coming down the road. 
our panel. Well, I'm the MC of events today, Steve Brugger and President. We've got Hugh Simpson Wells on the panel, who's the CEO of Oxford Computer Group. Uh, Jim Troyer, who is our delivery manager and senior consultant, will be doing the initial slide deck. We also have Randy Robb, principal consultant, and Tim Watson, senior architect, and everyone here will be um, handling the Q&A session as we move this forward. Hey, Steve. So, Sorry to interrupt. Can you reshare your screen? We're still yeah. showing, showing the, the polls. Okay. A little glitch in the system. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. Sorry about that. It's okay if you have to stop sharing altogether. There you go. Are you seeing it now? All good. Yep. Thank you. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand this over to Jim Troyer to handle the initial slides. All right. Thanks, Steve. Um, one thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to have Jackie rerun that uh, that mempool because it's going to tie directly into what we're talking about here. Um, and we're just curious uh, what pieces you're um, you're using. Uh, we we wanted you to be able to select more than one option in that uh, that screen. Obviously, yeah, not just sync, not just service, but what other pieces are you using? Uh, while we're waiting for that to come up, though, um, this is probably the most common question I get asked, which then leads into the rest of this conversation, right? It, it, I heard MIMS out of support. What do I do? Uh, the the first poll we put out there, the Azure AD premium subscription, do you have that? That ties directly into this because you are still on standard support if you have a premium subscription um, with the caveat, and they say caveat because it, it plays into it, um, as long as the uh, piece that you're working with enables Azure AD integration, which is most of MIM, right? As long as it populates Active Directory, Active Directory by extension populates Azure because we use AED Connect to do that. So um, the, the short and sweet answer is uh, MIMSync password change, PCNS, the password synchronization capabilities of the MIMSync engine, the service and portal, the add-ins and extensions, even the data warehouse scripts, if you're using the MIM reporting pieces, and the MIM connectors, all of the um, Microsoft supplied MIM connectors and, not your, and, and your, your uh, custom ECMA 2s um, are still supported. Um, things that are not on that list, um, which is why I'm curious what, uh, what we have uh, out there are Behold, right? It was, um, it's, it's been kind of off the list for a while. Uh, MIMPAM is not part of that and the certificate management, the CM. Hey, uh, good segue. We've redone the poll. We had a little bit of a technical issue and we wanted to uh, have a multiple select poll. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that now, Jim. And then when we close it, I'll hand it back to you. Perfect. So while you're answering that, um, another thing to be aware of is that Microsoft is is supporting this. Um, they're they're actively supporting this, right? They're still rolling out hot fixes. Uh, they had four last year. They have one this year so far, and they're doing things like patching security things and 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 giving you compatibility with current operating systems, right? Some of the hot fixes last year were so you could use um, Server 2019 and Server uh, SQL Server 2019. Um, these we presume Server 2022 and SQL 2022 are going to be on the list soon. Um, let's see, how are we doing on the... I think we're, uh, we've got pretty good response here. 97% uh, okay. use the sync service, 70% portal service. A few people are using Behold, a little bit more on the certificate management. And uh, okay. yep, so I'm going to close this out and hand it back to you. Uh, let me know yep. if you can still see this screen correctly. Yeah, yeah. So we still got our support uh, timeline there. Um, uh, so, so to, to wrap up this, this particular slide, right? So mainstream end date was January of last year, but with an Azure premium subscription, you have standard support for most of the pieces of MIM still through 2026 currently. Uh, the, the, you know, if, if something were to happen to extend that, I'm sure it would be big news, but, uh, so you have some time. Right, and Hugh has written an excellent blog and 
we have blogs out there about um, you know what to do and, and that's kind of what this conversation is about uh, if you don't have a premium subscription there are other options for support right you can get a hold of somebody like uh, OCG there is a uh, pay to get support option through Microsoft but uh, most of you seem to have a, pre a premium subscription all right Steve let's have the next slide there okay All right, so what are we using MIM for currently, right? So in the portal, we're using it for group management, white pages, um, end user identity administration, some self-service stuff, and not just self-service for end users, but also for help desk and HR and other departments that need to deal with identities in a, in a light touch manner. Um, and then we're using workflows and notifications and approvals, right? Things that um, are time-based, right? Event-based. Uh, it's kind of our event-based piece of the MIM environment, right? Um, group management, we'll touch on that a little bit more. Um, you know, there some of these things, we have ways to um, start transitioning off of MIM and get it into Azure. Uh, some of these things, there isn't a good clear um, migration path yet. Uh, Sync Engine, right? Basic Identity Lifecycle Management. This is the workhorse that's been around since forever right uh, i've been working with this since the tail end of mms and on so uh, if you know what mms is you're as old as i am um basic uh sync uh on-premises passwords right and specifically um grabbing passwords if you're using this you know this if you're not uh password change notification system grabbing password changes in active directory and then replicating those passwords to other targets that might be active directory it might be sap oracle some other um, system that you need to get that password to to, to give that seemingly single sign-on for end users. Uh, so we use the Sync Engine for that. Um, provides a single source of truth for identities. Um, and and not to be confused with the next uh, or the next one, right? HR driven driven provisioning and deprovisioning. HR we try to get single sources to to build an identity in the Sync Engine. But once it's in there, your MIM sync engine is kind of your single source of truth for that identity, right? It's got the bits and pieces from all the different systems we connect to, and we can leverage that data to then build our business cases. And so that's one of the main things sync engine is used for. Um, and then orchestration, managing complex life cycles, right? Do we disable? Do we delete? Do we wait a while? Do we give a contractor this? Do we give a regular employee that, right? So all those different things that, um, as MIM users, MIM administrators, you're, you're accustomed to seeing. Um, we put Behold on here because there is, and I see you know 2% of, of everyone out there that's, that's on this right now is using Behold. Um, so there is some capabilities in Azure to, to take over this stuff. What you don't see on this list are the PAM and the certificate management. Um, and I'm actually surprised by uh, how much we see on the, on the poll here. Um, there are more using uh, CM and PAM than there are using Behold. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and, and again, it's not necessarily a migration path, but the tools are starting to be created for PAM, uh, for privilege, privilege access, but in a, in a different uh, different style, right? A different, different uh, method than the Red Forest way that uh, they implemented that. All right, Steve, let's have uh, the next one there. All right, so this is a, a a question we got from one of the in in a one of the pre uh, pre webinar question panels, and so we went through and we answered a little bit of it, right? So self service password reset can it be migrated to Azure AD? The functionality, absolutely. And if you haven't done this, you absolutely should. Do not run both, right? It's just going to confuse your end users. Um, now you can't migrate, right? If you've set up the question and answer. Um, configuration on-prem and you want to migrate that to the cloud, you can't do that, but it is a much more robust system and a very end user intuitive environment. Um, group management, um, it, mostly it can be migrated to the cloud, right? Uh, right back to AD is limited right now that we've seen that kind of gaining momentum, you know, rolling downhill. Um, one of the big things we see with group management is, you know, in MIM, we have all this data about these users. And so we can build our dynamic groups, whether they be security or uh, distribution. And you have that same capability in the cloud up in Azure or wherever your target is. 
but the issue then becomes, well, I don't have that data. And so one of your transition methods here, one of your transition strategies here is uh, get those attributes into Azure, right? Use, use your right to AD and then AD Connect to get that up to Azure. If they're cloud managed accounts, use a graph connector of some sort, but get those attributes up there so you can build those same dynamic groups in the cloud and eventually replace these on-prem synchronized groups and have that uh, great flexibility up there, especially for licensing and um, controlling access to SharePoint and, and everything else, anything you want to use a security group for. White pages, we we would build something out in the portal sometimes for that. Um, there's no direct um, migration. Now, could you use some sort of SharePoint and leverage the information in Azure? Absolutely, right? So you can build something but it's, there's not really a good uh, out of the box uh, correlation for you there. Identity administration, mostly, right? Your customization is limited, especially if they are uh, attribute or uh, accounts that are synchronized from on-prem, right? Certain attributes are only gonna be allowed to be controlled by um, your on-prem Active Directory, but uh, mostly you can do identity administration there. Workflows, notifications, and approvals. Um, it, it's, it's mostly there, right? You can do notification, you can do, you can run uh, generate certain things, but it's not, um, it's not generic, right? There's, there, every, everything is going to be situation specific there. From the sync side of things, right? Basic identity lifecycle management, right? So can we get identities to where we need them? Yeah, pretty much, right? Um, there's a limited range, as it says here, limited range of HR supported systems coming directly into the cloud. Um, if you don't have one of those, you need another way to get that data in. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on here too. Um, HR driven provisioning and deprovisioning, right? Some now, right? And I guess this is later, right? So, you know, we have Workday, we have success factors, more are coming on board uh, that are, are web-based and able to provision directly to Azure AD. And then the question becomes, well, how do we get that back on-prem if we still need that? We cannot handle multiple sources of truth in Azure currently, right? So if I have three different places I might get data from, it's it's on, on a single identity, That that's something that's lacking currently. Uh, sync on-premises passwords, and specifically this goes back to that PCNS thing, right? So can we synchronize our password from Azure back to on-prem? Absolutely. Password write back is a, an excellent feature. And, you know, if you didn't have that, your SSPR wouldn't work too well up there in the cloud. But there's no mechanism in Azure to then replicate that password to other targets that you might need it in, right? Um, you're going to be relying on some sort of um, application registration federation something like that to do your single sign-on um, and and that's really the direction everything's going you know those that are still using passwords um, that's the direction things are going anyway right you don't we, we used to call it uh, the poor man single sign-on right synchronizing your passwords so that it's the same ID and same password in all the systems and so it's easier for the user there, there are better ways to manage that now um, and then managing complex life cycles for the the uh, the orchestration piece of what we talked about on the previous slide. It's just not there yet, um, but there are other ways to uh, manage pieces of that. On the behold side of things, uh, so RBAC, attestation, um, some of the, the Azure um, RBAC can manage Azure AD roles, but they're not able to manage on-prem right um, at a station we can do some on-premises ad groups if they're synchronized to the cloud uh, and there might be some manual reconciliation so there's not a true one-to-one -one migration capability there either um, touch real quick since we asked uh, certificate management um, the, not in the uh, sense that mim cm runs there there is not an equivalent in azure uh, but they are ramping up their capabilities of bringing custom search certificates and, and managing that in the cloud. Um, PAM, privileged access management, there, it's, it's a different mindset the way that, that Azure's handling that. Uh, we're doing, you know, we're, we're doing uh, just-in-time privileges, right? Trying to limit things based on an approval and whether you need it and only for a short amount of time. Um, but not in a red forest kind of manner that uh, MIMPAM was using before. All right, Steve, let's have the next one. All right. 
All right. And so it, this is more of a, um, you know, the, the, the webinar here is about how do we move to the cloud? Well, this is a, a quick list of their identity roadmap, Microsoft's identity roadmap. Where are they going um, and how are we getting there? Not necessarily, you know, direct correlation to MIM, but uh, things that you should be thinking about as you're migrating functionality off of MIM and into the cloud. Um, zero trust architecture, right? Explicit permissions, least amount of privileges, um, assume breach, right? Every access, every every request that's coming to you should be treated as though it's coming from an external uh, source, right? So put your, your, your security work around that mindset and, and, you know, we don't trust anybody, right? And if you don't trust anybody, then you're going to be assuming the worst and managing the the potential uh, impact on that. Azure Identity Governance, right? This is really um, rolling up uh, quickly. The access reviews, external entitlement management, um, getting better dashboards and better end user or uh, better ad administrative and end user. Um, integration for this external identities right how do we um, work with other entities the other companies other enterprises that we want to with the b2b and b2c um, depending on what you're trying to do um, and it's also good for uh, consolidation right there and and uh, bringing um, acquisitions in right we're able to um, grab information and share information to other tenants uh, threat detection, right? This goes right back to the first bullet of zero trust, right? How do we know when something's not right? Um, Microsoft's definitely going through and they're acquiring different technologies and rolling them into uh, their um, their offerings, right? CloudNox is a recent one, right? Cross-cloud permission discovery. Risk IQ is another recent one, um, helping you assess risks. CASB for your cloud apps, Defender for identity, and you know there's there's what four or five different identi uh, defenders out there, not just for identity. Um, Sentinel uh, is another one that is gaining uh, momentum, uh, being able to um, take the different inputs. Right, Microsoft has all this data coming into Azure on threats and potential threats, and being able to tag them and then giving you that information to then uh, deal with and remediate as you as you need to. And then they're working on the write back from Azure, right? And this does tie into the whole MIM thing, right? Azure AD Connect, we can already write certain things back through that. Um, you know, the, the the email addresses, if you're doing cloud only, um, certain, you know, passwords write back through there, group management, uh, group um, uh, membership is coming back through there. And then the, the newer piece of this is the Azure AD provisioning service. So, you know, with uh, right now things like Workday and success factors, you can provision directly from an HR source like that into your Azure. And then from Azure, use this provisioning service to bring things down and hit things like uh, SQL and, and um, Active Directory, right? All right. Thank you. Um, use cases currently requiring third-party solutions, right? And so uh, things that, that, that Azure isn't doing right now, right? So on-premises attestation, right? So we need a third-party tool to do that. Um, RBAC and ABAC, role-based and attribute-based um, access controls. Um, some of that's there, but the, the full solution, you're gonna need something else currently. Um, cloud to on-premise provisioning, that's what I was just talking about with the, uh, the provisioning agent, right? It's starting to get more, uh, capabilities. There are things in the works to get the uh, get, get you abilities to get identity information from Azure down to your on-prem if you need to do that. Uh, PAM for non-Microsoft resources, right? Session recording, just-in-time access rolls right back into that zero trust. Um, so the role-based um, access, but also um, your, your just-in-time access, your um, Oh, my my brain just locked up the the uh, the uh, the the granting roles based on uh, time and and approval right and 
Uh, it's just not there. We don't have session recording. Uh, we have just in time for certain things, but not um, not everything, especially for non-Microsoft resources. Um, hybrid risk analysis for on-premises apps, right? So we can tell from Azure when something's in the wild attacking there. We can tell even uh, when we're getting some threats to our on-premises Active Directory, but beyond that, we don't have a lot of information yet, right? So you're going to need something else to do that. And then our fine-grained access management, right? Or whether it be uh, customized because you've got some uh, applications in there or hybrid, you know, SAP roles are a prime example, right? We can't manage those fine-grained roles in there. Um, if you're in the um, other industries where you have uh, uh, Tim, what's what's the one with uh, with the the healthcare? I, it slipped my mind. Uh, Epic. Epic, right? If you got an Epic in, integration, right? With MIM, we could we could reach in and grab some of those roles and and, and help you um, do that fine grain management. We don't have that capability with Azure, and the, the, and so you're going to need something else that can do that. Um, so Jim, I want to make a general comment about this slide. Uh, our business has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years, and this entire slide is somewhat in response to those business changes. We're, we're being pulled in the direction of governance and compliance quite a bit. So it's not just providing these services, it's reporting on how we're protecting the environment uh, and sending those reports up to the auditors in our customer base. So uh, again, these third-party solutions are, are driving our solutions for governance and compliance. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna grab a couple of questions out of the uh, Q&A here um, because yeah. it, it, it ties to what, um, what I was talking about here and then we can go on to the rest of the questions, Steve. Uh, oh. So a uh, question was asked, do we need a P2 or is P1 sufficient for the support on MEM? P1, right? It, it's as long as you have an Azure premium uh, license, you have standard support for MEM through uh, 2026. Um, what is the best strategy to move from AD first, sync to Azure, uh, to Azure AD first, sync back to on-prem if needed? Uh, that's, that's, um, that's, that's a tough one. And I think that's actually one of our questions in here. It ties into this, right? Um, you're going to have to pick and choose, right? You're going to have to figure out what you need. Um, uh, if I'm understanding that question correctly, right? To move from, to move from the, from provisioning to AD first to moving to provisioning to Azure first, um, and back to on-prem, it's going to depend on what pieces of that you need, right? If if you need those group man, if you need those group memberships to do your security in the target systems, that's not completely there yet, but it's going to be there soon. And so we get back to that transition thing, right? So get the attributes up there so you're ready for that when it comes out. And you can turn off the group management within MIM and no longer have to worry about, well, how do I get that up there? And you can focus on the next thing. Um, yeah, I think that's, it's Hugh here. Just just to yeah. add to that, I think you know we we are waiting to see how the Microsoft story unfolds until the write back story is complete for users and and groups. It's hard for us to say what the best strategy would be for for making that move. We have to assume that Microsoft are going to make that pretty easy in the in in the fullness of time. But right now, you would be looking at some kind of third party system if you really wanted to to make that a complete solution. Uh, I don't know whether anybody else wants to jump in, disagree with that or whatever. And it's a, a good time for me to jump in and just say we clearly transitioned to the Q&A session of this, which was <laughs> uh, a primary intent of this um, presentation. So by all means, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the chat window or in the question window. Uh, and we will also be going through the questions that were submitted at the time that you registered for this event. Uh, we filtered through those, picked out the common ones, the best ones, and we'll, we'll juggle both. We'll do some on screen and we'll do some from the, the question window. 
Do you want to go ahead and uh, take this one on here that I put up on the screen? What's the roadmap for MIM? How does this support the requirements for locally managed host hosted high value systems like IAM and legacy bespoke integrations with other services? This one's from Matthew in the UK. Well, maybe it'd be appropriate if the UK guys uh, takes that on, so it's you here. Um, I, I think the problem is that there really isn't a roadmap for MIM beyond what we've said. Uh, they are going to continue to do hot fixes. They're not going to do a new version, they say, um, they being Microsoft. Um, and, you know, we've already had the slide about the timeline for support, and Jim's done a good job explaining about the support. Um, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, it, it's Microsoft's assumption that eventually people will be able to move away uh, and move most of their workloads into the cloud. It does, as this question implies, leave a potential issue for people that have legacy and bespoke uh, integrations, particularly on-premises ones, which they really can't move off of. And what I would say is uh, that we'll be doing another webinar. Uh, no doubt there'll be uh, a slide about it uh, towards the end or probably you will have heard about it anyway, in which I will talk more about uh, one of the alternatives, which is uh, Software IDM Suite. And I think uh, watch this space for other webinars covering this kind of thing. Okay. I think it, there's another question in the um, questions window that uh, uh, comes up quite a bit. So why don't we answer this one? Do we need premium P2 or is P1 sufficient? Yep, I grabbed that one, Steve. That was the the one I talked about. Yeah, P1. P1 is, um, well, you know what? I guess that that's a depends on when that question came in, right? Were they talking about support, or were they talking about some of the um, integration, some of the the transition points we were talking about, right? Some of that stuff is P2. Um, so I, I'm not sure when that question came in. If it's if it's dealing directly with Am I supported? Do I have the standard supporting standard support and don't have to pay for it? P1 is sufficient. Um, if you're looking for some of those capabilities to migrate off of MIM and start using Azure functionality, some of that is uh, P2. And, and I think the other comment to make there uh, is that we've seen P2 capabilities be pushed down into the P1 license as mm -hmm. well. So it's a fairly dynamic um, uh, set of services. So I think our advice is to keep an eye on this and see if Microsoft moves any of the P2 capabilities into P1 over time. Hey, Steve, there's a couple of questions um, also that have come up uh, in the chat, um, which relate to the question on the screen. You know, what's the roadmap for MIM and so on? Um, uh, one of them is uh, how do we replace MA and MV extensions? Another is how about MPLs and workflows, uh, action or fed authorization workflows using various business cases? And I think we don't see that there's going to be any kind of plug in replacement for either of those things. Uh, there just won't be a place for uh, extensions of the kind we had in MIM in the cloud ever. Uh, it's very, very unlikely. Um, and as far as uh, workflows are concerned, I think we're going to have to start thinking less generically and more in terms of features. Um, so, or workloads, perhaps is the right term. So we can move SSPR to the cloud. We can move group management to the cloud. When it comes to anything truly generic, it's back to the same answer as the one for the one on the screen for bespoke integrations and so on. Anything really bespoke like that is very unlikely to be covered uh, it by Azure AD. And again, I would say, let's let's discuss that in the next webinar. I've uh, changed to a new question on the screen, if uh, someone wants to take that on. Best practices for flipping from on-prem AD first to AD first and only provisioning on-prem for those with business need. Who wants to take that one? I think we just talked about that one. Yeah, we, that one was also in the uh, in the questions list here. Um, okay. You know, it's 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 going to depend on which piece you're looking for, right? It's you're going to have to you're going to have to pick it apart, 
You're going to have to pick and choose what you want to move. Um, it, it's going to be, I hesitate to use the word impossible, but it, it, it is. It's almost impossible to just flip everything from MIM to Azure because some stuff just isn't there. Some stuff needs time to get ironed out. Um, and some of the stuff is there, right? The, and again, I keep going back to the group management because that's the easy one in my head, right? Get the attributes up there so we can deal with the groups. Um, so some of it's going to be easy and quick, but it's not going to be, you're not going to have a, a simple migration path. There are no tools. And I think that's even another question we have somewhere. Um, there's not a tool to migrate you from MIM to the cloud because there is no one-to-one -one correlation for a lot of the functionality you have there. Right, what you have to do is see what you're doing and then figure out how to do that in Azure. I mean, it takes, you know, you just, there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence like uh, Jim said. Yep. Yeah, there it is, you know, Mike in Minnesota, is there an accepted procedure for migrating MIM to the cloud? Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's, there's, no, there's no formula, right? It's, as Randy said, you know, what pieces are you needing? What are you doing? Not, you know, I don't think we've run into a, into two MIM environments that do exactly the same thing ever. And we've taught, taught, touched a lot of them. So um, it's really going to be specific. And it also links back to what Hugh was saying a couple questions back that there are other tools that are out there that are able to do what we're asking here. Um, and so that might be an answer for you, right? Get what you can into Azure, get a third party tool to do the other part. Um, it's really going to be depending on your sit your individual situations. Yeah, I, I think it's good to mention here that um, when we start talking to a new customer, one of the things that we hear commonly is, I want to migrate all my application access. Okay, how many applications do you have? 500. Well, clearly, we can't do that many all at the same time or all at once. So the engagement model for us is to go through that list, prioritize, determine the size of the audience and the business um, importance of each one of those applications and build a migration strategy. I think in general, most of our customers have uh, an application list that numbers sometimes uh, in the hundreds. We've got to start someplace. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback on the end of that, right, sometimes we ask how many applications do you have, they say 500, we get in and start looking, they have 750, right, It, and that's where there are tools to help you with that in Azure, right, the whole CASB, um, you know, cloud access stuff um, can help you with that, but uh, yeah, that's a great point, Steve. All right. We may have covered this one but uh i'll let you it's it's one of my favorites right uh, if you haven't figured that already can you migrate group management from on-prem to azure absolutely as long as you can get the attributes up there um but not group populator right so group populator was a tool um shows how long christopher in minnesota has been working with this product um that we do still see it out there right the group populator tool uh it, it was it's something that is if you're not familiar with it it's outside of fim mim ilm um, that was based on a little web interface that was written to do some automated group provisioning based on departments, titles, locations, right? Whatever it might be. If a new one showed up, it created a new group and it kept the, at the, the uh, membership uh, in sync. Um, so can we do group management in the cloud like we do on-prem? Yes. Does, is it as robust as group populator? No. And Hugh, I think you you probably have more experience with this than than I do with the group populator side of things. I think you've covered it, Jim. Um, I don't see anything that's going to do the similar a similar job without either somebody doing a significant amount of of their own coding somewhere, or or again using some kind of third party tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a client that um, that it depends on what your groups are being used for. Um, I have a client that is using dynamic groups within Azure and using the group write back functionality to control the on-premises groups for what they're doing. But that doesn't fit all the scenarios that are out there. Yeah, okay. it's currently your, if you're in a hybrid solution in distribution groups, um, we're watching the space for security groups. Um, I, I just like to make the point here that, you know, it isn't fully functional yet, but look at, the identity governance 
piece of Azure AD now that does take a P2 license, but take advantage of the access reviews. You know, we since Behold is gone, we can now sync our AD groups up there. We can provide access reviews for all our groups, and that is part of your compliance. You can you can take those reports of your reviews and start looking at you know you know it's going to be a manual reconciliation we pointed that out in the powerpoints uh, but a lot of your governance tools out there are you know treat it like a disconnected app i can do my reviews my access reviews my attestation reviews and i can decide you know who doesn't belong to certain groups and you're going to need this for governance you know more and more regulations are coming out so we're not you know, we don't have a total solution for everything, but there is a lot of stuff in Azure that you can use that NIM didn't have. So it, uh, since we're talking about groups so much right now, there's a uh, good question that popped up, a bit of a hot potato, which means I'll give it to Jim. Um, so when do you think Azure will support uh, nested groups? <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. I was just thinking there's another one of our colleagues that would be his head would explode as soon as you said nested groups. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, and and honestly, uh, the, uh, the, the machinations behind that can be really complex in an on-prem situation. Um, I haven't heard anything about nested groups. Have, have any, any of the others, any of those, have you heard anything about nested groups? And it, it, well, I'll make, a, I'll make a quick comment uh, here. We were laughing about nested groups because uh, when we have a client uh, who's using nested groups, uh, we approach it very, very gingerly. Um, uh, nested groups can be very difficult to tease apart and build a migration st strategy around, but we've done it. Um, it's just that it can get exceedingly complex. Just to be Thank clear, the nested groups, nested groups are somewhat supported in Azure AD. I mean, they exist. It's just that there are some things you can't do using them. Right. Uh, and I think the answer is we don't know what the roadmap is. Microsoft are not saying. Yeah. All right. Let's take the next uh, slide. See what the question is there. Is MIM LDAP connector in Azure AD possible? Haven't had any LDAP discussions yet. Who's going to take that one? Well, I believe that's on Microsoft's roadmap currently. Um, so just um, keep an eye out for updates to that. Yeah. Um, but I. I've heard rumors of that effect. Yeah, but does it exist right this moment? No. But, no. Um, you know, there there are so many things out there, and there's another question in the in the uh, list over here that um, kind of relates to this, right? The, the, Microsoft knows you, they can't just turn everything off, right? There are going to be applications out there that need some sort of LDAP uh, integration. Um, can we can we get there? And how do we how do we leverage that? And you know the can we use the MIM LDAP connector to Azure? No, but you can use the graph connector, right? Does that get you what you need? Um, if you're still looking for a way to reach into Azure with MIM um, and not have to, you know, and not to deal with cloud only groups and users perhaps. And I, and I do have a client that is, I'm not that exposed to this, but I do know that they're using Azure Active Directory domain services for some of their LDAP integration. All right. Um, I'm seeing a couple of good questions coming in live. Uh, there's two of them that I think we should try to address. The reason we moved to MIM was to get away from a mess of scripts like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you guys yeah. are reading that, who wants to take that yeah, one on? I'll, I'll take the first crack at that because I, I felt the same way when, when things started kind of rolling here, right? So the, the full thing is, you know, the reason we moved from them was to get away from a mess of scripts. And the last thing we wanted to do is go back to that, right? Um, and that is why we're saying, you know, it's it's not like it's being shut off tomorrow, right? You've got uh, some time and, you know, the, the, the you know, three and a half years we've got left isn't a lot of time, 
but more and more capabilities going to be built out just in the last two years, the, the amount of, or even the last year, the amount of stuff that has been built out in Azure to take over this kind of functionality away from MIM, um, or that MIM handles now has, has been uh, pretty significant. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't want to go back to that, right? You don't want to have to bunch have a bunch of PowerShell scripts running to deal with data because you have to have different ways to go grab it from somewhere else to then jam it back into on prem, right? So the 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 thought on at least from from our perspective is still use MIM where you need to, but start moving the pieces you can without having to write little um, PowerShell VB whatever kind of whatever your scripting preference is without having to break it back out again, right? That is, you're absolutely right. Um, I don't see the name on whoever wrote that, but that, you're absolutely right. You don't want to get back to that. That's that's what uh, was the nightmare for most places, and then they finally mig uh, um, migrated themselves or, or trended toward using a solution like MIM. Um, and if you're looking for something that's um, able to do other pieces of it, like Hugh said, there's going to be some other webinars. Keep watching, um, to watch this space, right? We've got different solutions, different ideas. Anybody else want to chime in on that? Well, it's Hugh here. Um, yeah, um, I, I think, you know, Microsoft, everybody agrees that we don't want that mess of scripts coming back. Um, and I think the... Uh, if there's a, a criticism, it's that we we can't see a roadmap in enough detail. But Microsoft is gradually rolling out capability. Um, in, in preview already, uh, there is the capability to make use of ECMA2 MAs to write back to on-premises systems. At the moment, that's a little rudimentary, but we can see that there is an intention there to support um, uh, legacy systems. I, and I think the answer is that we won't ever go back to that mess of scripts. A solution will be found. That solution, the right solution for some organizations might be a third party system. The uh, right, the solution might be that Microsoft completes its picture. And I, I think that my feeling is there's absolutely no need to, to, to jump, to, to uh, jump to something worse at the moment. Uh, three and a half years is not a lot of time, but I think it is enough time. And that is the minimum time. We, we, we don't know whether uh, it'll be further extended. Um, I'd, I'd like to quite quickly deal, if I may, Steve, with a couple of other questions that are here. Yeah, um, I, I, but uh, I'm not sure if we answered the LDAP question clearly enough, the one that's still up on the screen. Um, there is an LDAP connector in Azure AD Connect, um, but it, uh, it you already have MIM installed. It's worth looking at. Uh, do, you, do you want to expand on that real quickly, and then we'll go to uh, the next question, Hugh? No, I, I think I think we covered that pretty well, right? Is there is there an LDAP connector in in for MIM? It depends on which direction they're asking for, right? Um, is there a way for MIM to reach into Azure AD with an LDAP connector? No, but you can use Graph. Right. Yeah. Um, should you go try and put some sort of LDAP connector on AED Connect? No, don't do that. Right. Just use the out of the box stuff there. Um, don't don't go customizing that. Um, it's 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 a utility box. Right. Um, so but as Randy said, there's 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 chatter. Right. We, we don't know for sure, but um, there may be a way to do an LDAP connector in the future. Yeah, I just wanted to revisit that. I thought we were a little unclear about uh, our answer. Okay, Hugh, you wanted to pull out another question from the live questions. Uh, yeah, I just saw a couple of things. Uh, one, one of them was specifically, is software IDM going to be an alternative to custom sync rules and so on? The, the, the short answer is yes. And the longer answer is see the next webinar. We, we can't cover that here, but I will be covering it. Um, another one was, what is the best cloud identity management tool out there that is close to replacing MIM functionality? Other, uh, uh, I think that means otherwise than uh, Azure. Um, this tool should work with Azure seamlessly. Again, I'm going to show the software IDM one. I'm not going to get, st I'm not going to stand here and say it's the best one, but I'm going to tell you what it can do, and you can come to that conclusion if, if you want to yourself. 
Um, and I think we may even be putting on further webinars about other tools. Uh, we just haven't announced them yet. Uh, and Tim, so, I, would like, I would like you to also jump in on this, uh, given the, the work that you've been doing with Sabian too. Sure. Um, you most definitely can say Sabian is, uh, you know, a cloud identity management tool. It was born in the cloud and it does provide the ability to reach on to your on-premises directories or any type of application that it can connect to. So similar to MIM, uh, there are connect, you know, various out of the box connectors and customizable connectors that you do need. Um, you know, it, uh, it, does provide a replacement for MIM. It is a identity governance tool. Uh, so those are, you know, some webinars that we will probably be looking into uh, to provide in the near future. Yep. Yeah, and it turns out that Sabian is a pretty broad platform with a lot of capabilities, uh, not just replacing MIM, that's uh, a small part of it. So it deserves uh, enough time to go into it in detail. Yeah, all of the little gaps that we kind of provided there on the, the slides will, you know, we can talk about how Savient fits in there. Yeah. Um, how about uh, the custom objects question? Who wants to take take that one on? Oh, I'm going to pick on you. Hugh, you want to? I think, well, I think the, the thing is, I just need to know a little bit more information, but I think if by custom objects we're saying that somebody's trying to support, say, students, temporary workers, and so on, as well as users, again, I think the story is a little tough at the moment. And, you know, Microsoft is still doing a great job in any circumstance where you've got complex life, life cycles where you've got multiple sources of truth and so on. We could be looking, we could be looking at that, that question could be about that. Um, I think the answer is, it, it, this is gonna develop. Um, right now, it's, it's stick with MIM. It's still the only game in town for some of the things that we're trying to do. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna take this question because it's a simple question, not nuanced, so I can handle it. <laughs> And I say with MIM for the next five years at least. Uh, so we know for four years you can. Uh, Microsoft uh, typically doesn't just switch things off. Uh, so I would expect that if you're still using it after four years, there's going to be some path uh, for support. But that's my guess. Okay. Let's go ahead and advance the slide, see what the next question is here. Do you think elements of MIM, the ECMA connector, will be supported past 2026 as part of Azure P2? We've kind of answered or addressed that question, but let's revisit it real quickly. And and who wants to take that one on? I think it's more of it's yeah, our. It, it, it's it, our it ties guess. into the the question you just answered too, and and you did pretty well, Steve. I, I'm I'm impressed. That's well done. Uh, so, you know, can you still use it for the next five years? Sure. You know, it's going to be like most other products, right? It's not going to just stop working. Um, and will elements of MIM be supported past 2026? Maybe, right? That gets to what Hugh was saying. We don't know for sure their entire roadmap. Um, Microsoft's going to be sensitive to the populace as a whole, right? If people are still using MIM because there is no good alternative, they will probably do something right I, I can't speak for them obviously but um maybe right but will they still work absolutely right there, there's nothing that's going to stop them from working um there there's nothing um in mim on-prem right now that is tied to any sort of um licensing functionality endpoint right uh, is that yep. anyone disagree some of the maybe endpoints, Jim, like the connectors out there, they they'll email you saying it's end of life, and I've heard of customers going past that date and they're fine. Uh, but I've also heard of you know maybe you know if you're talking about the old Office 365 connector, uh, that I think has been finally turned off. So that's a good point, right? And and they did the similar thing with the DirSync endpoints, right? When they <laughs> like okay, that's that's too old. Um, so certain 
targets that you're trying to talk to. I, I think, yeah, Tim, that's a good point, right? Certain targets you're trying to talk to, you may have difficulty getting to um, because they're not going to support or somebody's not supporting that anymore. But the actual capabilities of MIM itself, you should be fine. All right. A uh, couple of other good questions uh, popped in live. Um, I'm going to point out the, the last one first. Does Sabian have ECM capabilities like MIM? If you take a look at your screen, you'll see that uh, Tim answered that uh, in line. I think everyone can see that answer. Um, the other one that popped in that's uh, worth putting on the floor here, so many of our processes and much of our life cycle management is based on users falling into sets and running workflows in the service. Really can't see how we're going to be able to move these processes to Azure. Who wants to take that one? It, it, Hugh here. I mean, it, that does. that's an amplification really of some of the points that have been made previously about uh, or met, uh, MA extensions, NV extensions, uh, you know, custom objects, so all, all of these things that are very much features of uh, MIM and capabilities that MIM takes in its stride and which are not naturally going to map over to Azure. Again, I'm going to attempt to uh, cover that in future webinars. The only one we've announced is the one where we talk about software IDMs uh, hypersync panel, but uh, no doubt we will talk about others. Um, Tim, you might want to just uh, deal with the, the with whether you think Savient can readily handle that kind of thing. Sure, yeah, that that definitely is something they you know that Savient, not the same type of logic but you know similar understandings of identity lifecycle management um, you know they have policies in Savient like NPRs where you can put people into criteria and build certain actions upon that and they do have a robust um, UI based workflow approval solution which allows you to create workflows and approvals multiple um, approval levels uh, that are needed uh, and it's in its UI based uh, very easy to configure. Yeah, and I'll jump in once again on the Sabian side. Our our business is migrating uh, very heavily in the direction of identity governance and compliance. And uh, these these connectors and pieces and processes that we put into place have to be reported on properly too. So not just to the governance teams uh, in our large uh, customers, but also to the risk teams as well. So that platform it addresses both the governance and the risk side of the equation. At, at more of a business level than uh, purely technical, which we all seem to be pulled in the direction of, of talking about the business drivers uh, with our customers and dealing with those committees more and more. And so generally speaking, we've got another question up on the screen now that talks about these, what's the best technology to explore after a minute. So that's been our theme here for the last couple of minutes. Um, and we yeah. will we will be putting out more webinars on these alternatives too. Uh, I Bob, will wait, say, we're almost done. Steve, can I, can I interrupt please and just answer that really quickly? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think there's a conceptualization difference between what MIM does and what Azure and other modern auth systems do. And so with MIM, you're thinking of identities and then you're provisioning those identities into these different systems without really worrying about the protocols, the security protocols. You push it out to SQL, you push it out to these apps and the apps decide what they're gonna do. And with Azure, because a lot of modern uh, applications now use modern authentication, like SAML and OpenID Connect and OAuth, those are authorization uh, protocols with an authentication part to it. And that's really, it, it, it expands the protection of your environment. So MIM handles things differently than Azure because Azure has to deal with not only the identity, but also the authorization. And so, those two systems, you have to adjust your mindset a little bit when you're thinking of, well, we're gonna move to, from MIM to Azure. You just have to have that conceptualization uh, change in your way of thinking. 
that that's a very good point. I'm glad you interrupted me on that too. I, I know we're out of time, but we can uh, maybe speak uh, for another minute or two. What Randy just articulated uh, that rolls up into the the requirements of zero trust, right? The continuous off and other components. So it is a shift in the mindset, a very substantial shift. Um, and it's one of the topics when we're first in front of a new customer, we have to ensure that they really get what these tenants are and how it affects the architecture uh, of their overall infrastructure regarding identity. All right, we still got quite a few people on the, uh, on the call here, so we can continue. Uh, I'm not sure who has a hard stop on our side, but we'll continue for uh, another minute or two. Uh, does Azure AD provide a framework that can be used to project identities from or provision them to third party systems? So we touched on that a little bit, right? So the uh, the um, provisioning agent, right? It's starting to ramp up a little bit. There's there are um, between that and and some other um, ECMA two things we're seeing out there. Um, it's coming along, right? Uh, it's not prime time yet on some of that, but uh, on the ECMA twos, but it's getting there. I think there's a sort of general answer we can give here, which 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 just keeps coming up. There isn't a generic replacement. If you're thinking of MIM and its ability to project from just about any system to just about any system, that isn't something that that's happening. But the uh, Azure AD is getting better and better at uh, connecting to at least cloud HR systems. So that's the that's the inbound side of it and uh, more and more systems that it can write to. And with, with, the, uh, with its ability to make use of ECMA uh, uh, extensions coming along, that ability will hopefully, at least for the export side of it, extend to just about anything. It's, it's developing. All right. So it is a little bit after nine and we're already losing people on our uh, side who have a hard stop. So this has been great. And thanks for all the live questions that we got. Very thoughtful. And um, by all means, if you did not get your questions answered, contact us, uh, reach back, and we can answer those questions one-on-one. -on -one. We didn't even make it through all of our uh, questions that were submitted prior to this webinar. So uh, we're here to help you answer those questions. We're here to to help you uh, uh, figure out your path towards the cloud and that migration to AAD and beyond. So thanks again for joining us and uh, we will see you at a future webinar. Thanks everyone.